Hello again, it's Thursday and welcome back to the Christmas series. So you would have already met the Purr Resent, uh, the mouse, and last week you would have met our Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. So this week I'm going to introduce you to the nosy puppy. All right, let's get into it. All right, so as you saw, we're going to be creating our nosy little puppy today. So I'm just going to quickly sketch out what we're going to need for that. Okay, so the pieces that we're going to need to make is, first of all, we're going to need a Christmas stocking and we're going to put a little snowflake pattern around that. We are going to need a little peanut for his body. We're going to need two little front paws. We're going to need some haunches and some back legs, two of each of those. We're going to need a waggy little tail because like I said, he's a good boy really. And we're going to need a couple of ears. Okay, so we're going to start with the Christmas stocking uh, where they're going to make the body. Then we'll make the front feet, we'll make the back legs, we'll make the tail, and then we'll make the little ears that go on top of the stocking. We'll make those last. Okay, let's get into it. So the tools and materials you're going to need for this, let's start with the yarn. I am going to be using some budget acrylic for the body. It's Portacraft, 100% acrylic, uh, in a nice sort of sandy gold color. For the stocking, I'm going to be using the Flinders cotton that I've grown so fond of. So I've got a nice sort of deep red and a nice white. Uh, so the reason I'm using acrylic for the body and cotton for the stocking is that I like the look of the cotton better. I think it gives a nice classy look, but this acrylic fuzzes up so nicely and we are going to be creating a fuzzy puppy today. So before I get started, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to use these two yarn types together. So one is completely cotton and one is honestly a very cheap kind of acrylic and one feels a lot thicker than the other and they, they look very, very different. So I just whipped up a little swatch of each and they swatch up close enough to the same size that I know I can use the two together. So that's how I knew that I would be able to use the cotton with the acrylic. And we are also going to be using it's just a little bit of black thread. You can use black yarn for it as well, just to sort of stitch on a couple of details. Okay, so in addition to that, you're going to need your 3.5 millimeter hook. So all of these yarns recommend a four millimeter hook, and I always recommend sizing down for these kinds of projects because it gets you a better structure. You are going to need your pins and needles, a pair of scissors. If you are also making a fluffy puppy, you are going to need a wire pet grooming or slicker brush. Basically these are, sorry, you may have heard me say this a couple of times now. I got this for $6 at the supermarket. It is a pet grooming brush and it has just these very fine sharp bristles on it that kind of hurt a little bit to touch. That's what you need to make regular acrylic, fuzzy acrylic and stuffing. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start with the stocking. So for the stocking, we're gonna use red to start with. We're gonna start at the toe. So we're gonna work in one continuous loop down to about this point here where we will be adding a little sort of snowflake or star detail. Uh, we will then be doing, as is basically the theme for, <laughs> for these Christmas patterns, uh, we will be doing some short rows to help us turn this corner. And we will then be working in a continuous spiral up this way to finish off the, the ankle of the, of the sock. We'll be then swapping to the white and doing sort of the white ankle cuff bit. All right, so first we're just gonna work up the toe part of the sock. Okay, so we've worked up the nose of the stocking. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on this heel piece. And to do that, we're going to be using our short rows again for the third pattern in a row. Uh, <laughs> I, I have really sort of taken to this particular crafting technique. So we're gonna be working a couple of short rows. So those are rows that do not go the whole way around. In the case of this particular piece, what that's going to mean is we're going to be working up like a straight panel and then we'll be closing in on the other side. So. These will be sort of straight rows all the same length and then we'll be closing on the other side and then we will start working around. So we're gonna start doing those short rows now. So they start with a turn and then 22 single crochet across and we repeat that row six times. So just turn 22, turn 22. Uh, and that will help us work up this sort of this underside part of the foot. Okay, so the next stitch in this round is a decrease over four stitches. So first we're just gonna chain one and turn and then we're going to pull up a loop in each of the four remaining stitches here. We're going to yarn over and pull that through the first four loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over again and finish off the stitch just like that. So that is our decrease over four. So that is what the bottom part of our stocking looks like from the top and from the side. And so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to work up to form the ankle. Okay, so we start by putting 12 single crochet down the sides of those short rows. We're gonna do front post along the eight stitches that were part of the original toe. Now front post for the purposes of this pattern is the outside of the piece. We're working around the post of the stitch from the outside. Just like that. So what that's gonna do is help pull the top part of the stocking up into position and so that it's sitting straight up the way we want it to. You'll note that we'll have a kind of sharp corner on the inside now. 
and then we're going to work 11 single crochet back up that side and that should finish just before that original four decrease that started off this row so there's our decrease there that we can see okay so now what you're going to do is work throws of 32 single crochet just in a continuous spiral up to form the sort of leg part of the stocking okay so that is our sock complete and we're just going to finish that off so now what we're going to do is we're just going to add the white cuff on so to do that you will need your white all right and with your white we're going to do we're basically going to work a row of front post around so you can slip stitch to join or I'm going to do a standing half double crochet and I'm going to work it around that last post. So that's where we finished off and that's where I'm working my first stitch. There is my half double. And I'm just going to work one of those around every post around which should come out to 32. Now just to avoid any confusion here I am using US crochet terms so for me a half double crochet is you yarn over, you insert your hook, you pull up a loop and then you yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook. So we're working in front post because it's going to give us that really nice definition between where the red ends and where the white begins. It's going to make the white bulge out slightly as well. Okay so that is 32 half double crochet around and even though it might look like there's another stitch to work into we have counted back we know it's 32. So we know that we have finished off that row. So now I am just going to slip stitch into that starting stitch to finish, finish off that row. And then, yeah, so then we're going to work the next couple of rows just to build out the cuff a little bit more. And then we're going to finish off. All right, so we finished off that third row. And now just to, before we finalize, I'm just going to chain. I'm just going to chain 12 fairly tightly. And we're going to just loop that back through and slip stitch through the same stitch. Just to create the little loop on the stocking and finish off. So we are just going to set our white to one side. We are going to use it to do a few embellishments on the stocking a bit later. But there is our stocking. Now you, if you were just after a stocking pattern this one works fine. Uh, we are going to stuff it as part of this process but you can just use that as an actual little Christmas tree ornament which is really cute. Okay so that is part one complete and we are just going to pop it to one side and we're going to start working on part two. So part two is the body and it's this peanut shape. So we're actually going to start at the top and work our way down towards the base. It is very very easy. We're working in one continuous spiral. There's no front post or back post or short rows or anything to worry about. We're just going to work it all in one piece from the top to the bottom. Okay, so there is our body peanut. We stuffed it very firmly before we, we finished off. Wove in that end to close off the cap. So we've done part one, we've done part two, and now we're moving on to part three, which is making two little front paws. The way we work these front feet is we start at the center base of the foot. We work up to 12 single crochet around. We're gonna make some toes using a combination of increases and decreases, and I will show you how to do those when we get there. We will then sort of decrease down to just the leg width and continue upwards that way. So it's all worked in one continuous spiral. So we start by working up to 12 single crochet. All right, so just like that. So that's the base of our foot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our toes. So the way we do that is we're going to put three single crochet into the next stitch. We're then going to just put a single crochet in the next one. And we're going to repeat that twice more. So three single crochet and then a single crochet. And we're then just going to work six single crochet to finish off the round. Okay, so that's the end of that round. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to do a decrease over the next three stitches. So what that means is we're going to pull up a loop in each of the next three. So those are the same three that we put all in the same stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull through those three and then we're going to yarn over again and finish off that stitch. We're then just going to single crochet in the next one. And you can see there that we formed this little toe. So we're going to do the same thing for the next two toes. So decrease over three and a single crochet, decrease over three and a single crochet. So there are three little toes on your foot. 
So we're just going to do six single crochet to finish off the round. So the rest of this is fairly straightforward. We're now just going to work to close in the top of the foot and work up a little bit of a leg. Okay, so we've worked up most of the little leg there. So now we're just going to create like a little panel that's a single layer that's going to just help us attach it to the, the body a little bit more securely. So we're going to do that really easily. We're going to work six single crochet. And we're going to chain one and turn again. We're going to work a decrease, two single crochet, and then another decrease. And we're going to chain one and turn again. And we're going to just work two decreases across the top and finish off. So that's the first little front leg. You are going to want to put a little bit of stuffing just down in the foot. The leg itself should not be stuffed, but the foot should have a little ball in it. So that is our first little foot and you just need to make another one just like that. So there are our two little front feet. So that is part three done. So now we're going to work on part four. We're going to start by making the two haunches. So like all the Basically these legs are constructed in two parts. We've got a top part that attaches to the body and we've got the foot itself. So we're going to start by creating the two sort of top parts that go onto the body. So these are made by working up from a magic ring of six and we slowly increase up until they are 18 single crochet around and then we finish off. Okay, so that is our finished upper leg. So this does go a particular way up. So you'll note that we have one side that's kind of curled over and one side that sits really flat. The curled over side is the top when we attach it that side will sort of stick out slightly like a, like a leg should. So now we are just going to whip up the foot as well that goes with that. So for the back foot, uh, once again, we're going to start with a magic ring of six. We're going to work up to 12, repeat for a little while, and then we're going to decrease all the way down and, and finish off. Okay, and there is our back foot. I have not stuffed this at all, but you can add just a little bit of stuffing to the toe if you would like. So the way this works is that that will attach like that, forming the two parts of the leg on the side of the body. So now you just need to make another one of each of those, just like that. And so now we have our back legs done. So that's step four complete. And now we're just going to move on to step five, which is to make him a waggy little tail. So the tail has actually worked from the tip down to the base. And there is his little tail. So now I'm just going to finish that off. Just like that. So that's his tail. So that is part five complete. Now we're going to leave part six for now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my wire brush and I'm going to fuzz each of these pieces because I want them to be nice and fluffy. Uh, this is, however, an optional piece. He does turn out, I mean, he's still got a few pieces pinned on here, but like he's perfectly adorable, um, non, non fuzzy. So I am just going to fuzz all of these pieces. In case you've never seen this technique done before, all you have to do I'll use one of the feet as an example, is you take your wire brush and you just brush in all directions and you'll see that you start sort of pulling up these little fibers that form a fuzz and you just keep brushing until you've reached the fuzziness that you're looking for. Okay, so I've made all of those pieces fluffy now and I also took a little bit of our black thread and just sewed on a couple of toe marks on each of the paws. So that's the front and the back ones. You'll note that I didn't bother fuzzying up the, the undersides of anything just because they're the bits that are going to be attached on and they just don't need to be fluffy. All right, so now we've completed all of the parts up until part five. And so part six is just making a little pair of ears. Now the ears are an optional extra. So for the ears, we start at the tip and we work our way down to the base and we make two of them exactly the same. All right, so there's our two little ears. So now we are just going to pin everything together. So this is the body and you can see that it has a decided bulge out one side. That is the butt, okay? Identifying the butt is an important first step in this project. From there, we know where to pin our legs. So starting with our little front legs, we're just gonna pin them roughly in place and then we'll finesse the positioning later. So there are our two front legs. So our back legs will be attached to the side. As mentioned, there is a sort of a, a top and a bottom to this piece. So the flat edge goes at the bottom and this little ridge goes at the top. So 
So there we go, that is loosely where we want all four legs and you've got to check to make sure that it is stable and it can sit up on its own. And then we will just our, attach our tail in the center back. And this really will be obvious if you don't center it. So do take your time to pin it properly. Just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stocking and we're just gonna fit it on over the top. Now we are gonna stuff this, but we've got to check to make sure it all fits first. So I like to pull mine down so the back legs are still sticking out, but it does cover the top of the front legs. I think that's a really good fit. So we are just going to take it off and stuff it. The way you stuff it is you just stuff basically this foot part of it and you leave this bit free because that will be the bit that goes over the top of the dog. So there is our stuffed head. So we will be attaching the ears to that a little bit later, but first what we're gonna do is sew all of the pieces of the dog together. So there we go, all the pieces are attached and we've made sure that we've attached it in such a way that all four feet make contact with the ground and the tail is where we want it to be. Cute little thing that it is. <laughs> so we've stuffed the foot part of the stocking and now we're just going to pop it onto our puppy. Now you can give yours sort of a little bit of a crooked tilt if you want, like have him looking off to one side a little bit. That's really cute. So pose it however you feel. So then we have our little ears and I'm just gonna pin them in place. So you pin them at the back of the foot. Now we could have stitched these in, but because I wanted them to be more of an optional piece, I decided to make them separate. So you can sort of decide if you like the look of them or if you want to just go in the, in the different, slightly different direction of, of not having them on there. Okay, so now we are just going to stitch on a little bit of a snowflake design around, around the nose. And hang on, I'll just pull this guy into frame for a second. So you can see that these little, <laughs> these particular markings, they fall where you would expect the eyes to be. And that's kind of part of the joke. So the markings do go the whole way around and you do use the stitches to sort of help you work out exactly where to stitch. We're gonna use a little bit of our white. I always get my pins out first to sort of mark where I'm gonna go. So in terms of the row placement, you can sort of see a very clear delineation between where our short rows are and where our original spirals were. So these will all take place on the original spirals in the last three rows. Okay, and there he is. So we've stitched on this little snowflake pattern all the way around. And it's just to give a little suggestion of eyes without being sort of overly stating it. And then just with a little bit of white, stitch around the, the white cuff into the body to hold the stocking in place. Now, as I showed before, you can attach the ears. I actually kind of like this one without, without the ears. I think that the, with the fuzzy, it looks better with no ears. And I think that when he's not fuzzy, he looks cuter with the ears. So that is our puppy who is really a good boy, but uh, he's gotten into a little bit of trouble. Okay, so that is it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will have a go at making one of these. The written version of the pattern will be available on my Etsy and to my patrons, and I will leave a link to both down below. Please remember to tag me on Instagram if you do end up making any of these patterns because I would love to see how your creations turned out. And I wanna know, do you like him better with the ears or without? Also, if you're enjoying this series, please remember to like and subscribe just so that I can know which, which creations you guys are enjoying so I know to, to make more of those. So this is the fourth of the five patterns I will be releasing over Christmas and you'll just have to tune in next week to see what's going to be happening. <laughs> right, otherwise that's it for this week. Okay, bye! Oh god, what was that? Otherwise that's it for this week. Okay, bye! <laughs>